Hi friends, today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on bridge design and I'm going to be talking about the loadings of the bridge, uh, how to analyze the, the bridge deck and many others I'm going to be treating today. So please follow and try to grab something. Quickly I want to go into the topic. Let's start with the bridge. The bridge. Bridge design. First of all, what is a bridge? A bridge is a structure that provides continuous passage over an obstacle. You can define a bridge in a simple way like that. So, but basically today we are going to be dealing with the topic, the loadings of the bridge. Now, bridge design talking about loading. Loading of the bridge. Now, in the design of any structure, of course, we know before you carry out analysis of the structure, you need to load it. Now, in the bridge design is very, very different from other structure in the sense that it, it is loading comprises of uh, transient load for the live load. The dead load remains the same. It's the self weight of the individual structural elements that makes up the bridge is calculated. But I think where the challenge lies is the loading of the life, the life load itself, which is a transient load and a moving load. So, but today we are going to deal with the loading of the bridge based on codes. And the code we are going to be dealing with today is not a code, but the British standard. We have other international code which can be used we have the American code, we have the Indian code, whichever. But today I'm going to specifically be dealing with the British standard. Now let's go over the British standard codes. Codes for design. British. British standard. Now I will start immediately with the introduction of the British standard. Of course, the British standard has evolved over time and is more applicable in this part of the world. Here in Nigeria, we use the British standard. So is the standard that has been there modified over the years. But I'm not going to go into the history to look at the modifications from the beginning, how it was modified to what it is now. I'm just going to do a little introduction of it. Of course, the British standard has been modified, but I will start from the first one of the codes which was introduced. Uh, I'm not going to go into the others. I'll talk about this one, which is the BS, the BS, 5400 part 2 this one is 1978 the BS 500 part 2 1978 I'll show you the code here you can look at it uh, there's a code uh, steel and concrete composite bridges part 2 specifications for load now, of course, we have others. We have um, BS153. This one was much more earlier, BS153. Part 3A. BS153, Part 3 3A. Then we probably have the BD. The BD. BD slash 01. The British Design Document. The British Design Document. The British Design Document. 
This one is 1990. Volume 14. Part 2 of this. So these are some of the the recent codes. We have other version of the codes which, which which came earlier on before these ones came in. I think the most recent one now we can use this this British document, uh, DD document, uh, 1990. When it comes to the British codes, now let me talk a little bit about this. After I have this, I'll be using this to give you an illustration. Now under this code we have the load life load that is applied to any bridge structure. First of all, in loading of the bridge, we must understand that we have the dead loads. What are the various types of load? The dead load, we have the life load, we have the wind load, and we have the seismic load. Now, let's say loadings of the bridge. Those are the bridge. Those are the bridge. First one we said we have the dead load, dead load, and that the dead load we have superimposed, superimposed dead load, like that of ash parts. Then the second one we have have the life load, life load, or you can call it transient load, then we have the wind load, wind load, or lateral load, Then we have the seismic load. Seismic load. So all these are the loads that are going to be acting on the bridge structure, which we are going to be analyzing as we progress in this tutorial. Most importantly, I'm going to talk about the life load. In designing of the bridge, what is very much of concern to the engineer is the life load because the dead load and other loads can be quite easily be obtained. But the life load, a lot of numerous calculations have been done to analyze the structures uh, under the influence of life load. Now let's look at them. The BS500, what are the load, life load involved? We have basically two life loads that are going to be acting on the deck of the bridge. The first one is called the HA load. And this HA load comprises of two loads. One is the uniformly distributed load and a knife edge load. Now, for BS, for BS, 500 up to 1978. What is the HA load? According to this code, the HA load comprises of what? The UDL per national link. Uh, Notional link plus the knife edge, knife edge load per notional link. So a UDL, the HA load comprises of what? A UDL per national lane plus the knife edge load per national lane. Now let's talk about the UDL. 
the UDL has an intensity. The UDL, let's call it W. UDL, according to DS5 formula, the UDL comprises of a load of 151, 1 over L, 2.475. The intensity of the load for the UDL is 151 brackets, 1 over, 1 over L, close brackets, raised to power 0 0.475. That is the intensity of the UDL. Now, the night edge load is already known. That load is, uh, that load is 120 kilonewton power. Power marginal one. This one is power marginal one. 120 kilometer. Okay, let's say with this one. 120 kilometer load. Each of these loads are marginal length. So these are the loads that are acting on the bridge deck according to this one. Now, if we go to BS, BD, now for BD, for BD slash O1, this for BD slash O1, the intensity in this case, the code that's been modified, we have an intensity for each layer. We have each layer, each layer to be comprises of, or we say, we have a, an H8, a UDL for the H8 to be 336 1 over L raised to power 0 0.67 per national in weeks. This is the UDL. Then the night L load is not changed, it remains the same 120 kilonewton per national in. Limit. So you can see that the night edge load remains the same. So the difference between BS500 and BD01 is this. So I will know this now. We can now be sure that any of this can still be applicable, but this is much more recent. I would advise you to do this. Now, let's go to the second load, which is the HB load. Under the code, GS5400, we also state that the light load will comprise of an HA load, which we've already known is made up of a uniformly distributed load, a night edge load, and an HB load, an HB load. Now, the second one is HB. This HB load is an abnormal vehicle load. It has a unit of 45 units. It has 45 units. 45 units per, per axle. No? So let me draw it HB load. This is abnormal. Abnormal vehicle load. Abnormal vehicle load. So we've now seen that. So let's have a schematic diagram of the HB load. And uh, you can be able to understand it better. Let's have a schematic diagram of the HB load. Now let's look at it. The HB load. HB. Now, like I said, that the HB load comprises of 45 units, 45 units load, and a 30 or or a 30 units load. These are the two loads. Now, one unit is equivalent to one unit. Equals to ten kilonewtons. So 
all we are saying is this one is equivalent to 450 kilonewton per per axle. This one is 300 kilonewton per axle. Okay, so we have seen the loads that are acting per axle, but let's look at the plan of this HP load so that we can have a clearer picture of what we are saying. I'm going to draw a plan of this. Uh, let me draw a plan of this. So this is the vehicle, this is the plan view. view so this is very cool sorry they are evenly spaced so if they are evenly spaced let me do something that is a little bit close to what we what it should be what it should be Let's do something closer to what it should be. It's not to scale, but let's do something a little bit closer. Okay? So, this is one of the wheels of this vehicle. It has four wheels. It has four wheels. It has four wheels. So this is the vehicle, it has four wheels. Now, the distances from each of these wheels, according to this code BS5400, here is one meter, here is one meter, here is one meter, okay? So, so here is one meter. Now we have here, uh, can draw it. We have here this is 1.8 meter. Here varies. Uh, we have here could be six. Here could be six. Here could be eleven. Here could be twenty-one. Here could be twenty-six. Right here is 1.8 meter. So. Any of these values can be used depending on the span of the bridge and whichever of these will give the worst situation or worst scenario during the analysis, you can employ any of them. So, having said this, we know this. <coughs> now we have 450 kilonewton per axle. So it means that the all of the load on this axle is 450. 450, 450, 450. And if that be the case, it means one wheel will be taken. We have four equal wheels. So one wheel, one wheel will be 450 divided by 4. And that will give us 112.5 kilonewton. So <coughs> we have 112.5 kilonewton for each wheel of this HB vehicle. So this is the plan view of the HP vehicle. We've seen it and uh, we know this. So the next stage we are going to be looking at is how to apply these loads. I want you to stay tuned to this channel. If you like it, please subscribe to this channel. And I tell you the next class we are going to be doing some analysis looking at these various uh, loadings. Thank you very much. See you in our next tutorial.